Hey, welcome back. Today I'm going over my practice test that my kids are going to be doing in class this week. It's all about graphing. So in this first one, number one, we need to graph the line y equals two-fifths x plus three. This is in slope-intercept form, which is y equals mx plus b, where the m is the slope and the b is the y-intercept. So in this case, 3 is the y-intercept, so I'm going to go up to the y on the 3, put a dot, and the slope is 2 fifths. That means we are going to go up 2 over 5. Up 2, 1, 2, over 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And there's another point there, and we graph the line. And we are done with problem number one. Problem number two. All right, this is a little bit different. This is one of those horizontal or vertical lines. This is a line, it's not an answer. But it does say y equals negative three. That means the y-intercept is negative three. And since there is nothing else to go off of here, this is going to be a horizontal line that goes through that point. <clears throat> if you want some more information on how to graph these, check. I'll put a link up in the corner here so you can see us graphing horizontal and vertical lines. Number three. This one is in slope-intercept form again. This time, the intercept is negative 4. So I go down and put a dot on the negative 4. That's our starting point. Then we use the slope. This is just the whole number 3, but you have to think about that as 3 over 1, which means we're going to be going up 3 and over 1, starting at this point. 1, 2, 3, up 3, over 1. And there is the second point, and you draw the line. It goes through those two points, and you are finished with this graph. <clears throat> Number four. All right, this is another one of those horizontal or vertical lines. It doesn't look like a regular equation to graph, but it does say x equals 2, which means it's going to go through the x-intercept of 2. Well, a straight line that goes through that is going to be a vertical line going straight up and down. Number five. Ooh, this is a little different. Okay, it can be confusing, but it's actually very, very simple. I'm telling you what the x and the y intercepts are. You don't have to find them. All you have to do is plot them and then connect the dots. So the x-intercept is negative four. That is right here. The y-intercept is positive 5, that is here, and connect the dots. That line is drawn. And number 6 is another one like that. The x-intercept is a positive 2. The y-intercept is a negative 3. And connect the dots. That's the first six. We have six more to go through. <clears throat> okay, now we got to do a little bit more work. Um, this one is in standard form. <clears throat> so you have to find the intercepts. There's a link. <laughs> There is a link up above here in the, in the video where I went over how to find the intercepts. So if I go through this too fast and you don't get it, I want you to check out that video. But in order to find these, there's an x-intercept and there is a y-intercept. So the x-intercept, you're going to get when you let y equal 0. Well, the easiest way to make y equal 0 is just make y go away, and I'm just going to cover that up. So, <laughs> can tell I've been teaching today. Um, if you cover that up, 
and write down what you see. It says 3x equals 4. 3x equals 4. Now solve for x by dividing both sides by 3, and we get x equals 4 thirds. And if you use your calculator, you can change that into a decimal that might make it easier to graph. 4 divided by 3, it's 1.3 repeating, so it's about 1.3. 1 1.3 repeating. And to graph that, it's a little bit more than 1. So I'm just going to put a dot right there. Now to find the y-intercept, you do the same thing, except it's going to be a little bit easier in this one. So the y-intercept, we don't want, we want to keep the y and lose the x. So you cover that up. And then you're looking at y equals 4, write that down. Well, that is the point, 0, 4. That goes right there. And then we draw that line. We are done with that. All right, number 8. Again, we have to find the x and the y-intercepts to be able to do this. So in order to get the x-intercept, I want to keep the x and lose the y. So I cover up the y part, and I'm looking at 4x equals 6. 4x equals 6. Divide both sides by 4. We get x equals, in my head, I can get that to 3 halves, which I know is 1.5. You can use a calculator to find that. Uh, 1.5 is halfway in between, so I put the dot right there. All right, to get the y-intercept, oops, I'm going to scoot this over. Uh, to get the y-intercept, we want to keep the y, lose the x, and write down what you see. 3y equals 6. Solve that. Divide both sides by 3. y equals positive 2. That's where the dot goes. And draw the line. If I'm doing these too fast, pause. Slow me down. <laughs> you can go backwards and watch it again or just have me go really slow. All right, number nine. We're working with the intercepts again. And on any of these, you really could just solve for y and turn this into slope-intercept form if you would like to do that. For this one, that would also be pretty easy. I'll do it that way right now. I, I kind of like intercepts more, and I think my kids are probably going to do intercepts instead. But, you know, this one just says plus y. So what would happen if we subtracted 3x from both sides? You'd get y equals negative 3x minus 5. You might like that more on this one. It's up to you. I know that the slope is negative 3 and the y-intercept is negative 5. So I'm going to go down to the negative 5, put a dot there. My slope is negative 3 over 1. Well, that's a little uncomfortable because I'm going to go off the graph, but that's okay. I taught you guys, you know, I showed people how to do that. If you need more space on the graph, just make more space. So I know I'm going to have to go down a bit more. So I'm going to go down 1, 2, 3, and then I'm going to go over 1. Put a dot right there, and that should work. The other way you can do this, and I did do this in a video. I'll, if I remember, I'll put a link up here in the corner. Um, you can do this backwards. You know it's going to go like this, right? So instead of going down 3 and over 1, I'm going to go up 3 and back up 1. 1, 2, 3, and then back up 1. You can do it like that as well. Once you have your dots, draw the line. So on the test, if you're taking my test, it doesn't matter to me what, if your graph is the right size or not. I want you to make it work. All the graphs are going to be 6 by 6 like this. So. All right, for this one, I'm going to go back to the using the intercepts because I like intercepts more. Um, so to find the x-intercept, I don't want the y, so we're going to cover that up. Write down what you see. I see 2x equals negative 2. 
Divide both sides by 2. I get x equal negative 1. That is my x-intercept right there. <coughs> now the y-intercept on this one is going to be a little tricky, which is why I wanted to do it. If you want the y-intercept, means we don't want the x. So we'll cover up the x. The, net, the subtraction sign stays with the y. Minus y equals negative 2. Guys, you can't leave it like that. I need to know what, not what negative y equals. I need to know what positive y equals. And however you want to figure that out, if you want to multiply both sides by negative 1, divide both sides by negative 1, whatever you're comfortable with, do that. Me, I'm totally comfortable with just switching the signs. If I want to go from a negative to a positive y, I have to switch the sign of the number too. So it switches from negative to positive as well. So my y-intercept is a plus 2. I like doing it that way instead of thinking about it too much. I just change everybody's sign. It's the, it's the same thing as multiplying by negative 1. I just do it faster. <laughs> All right, so that's what that one should look like. All right, now, number 11 and number 12 are a little bit different. In this case, I want to write the slope-intercept form. So I'm giving, it's like we're doing them backwards. I'm giving you the graph, and I want you to figure out what it would be. Well, the slope-intercept form is y equals mx plus b. So what I have to figure out from looking at each one of these graphs is what is the slope and what is the y-intercept. Let me zoom in this one a little bit because sometimes the, compu the computer just generates these for me randomly and sometimes they look a little bit weird. But I'm looking at this line right here and the y-intercept, even though it doesn't keep going, that y-intercept is right there. Well, that's negative 5. And my slope is 1 over 1, up 1 over 1. I can see that's how it's moving. So my slope equals 1. And my y-intercept equals negative 5. So the equation of this line is y equals 1x minus 5. I'm taking that as an answer but you can also just write it as y equals x minus 5. Okay, let's do that again for number 12. Again, in order to write the equation, I need two pieces of information. I need to know the slope, and I need to know the y-intercept. If you can get both of those two pieces of information off the graph, you're going to be able to write an equation in slope-intercept form. So I'm looking at this and I see the y-intercept is right here and that's at positive 4. Written as a point, it's like this, but I think for what we're doing right now, this is a little confusing. So I just think of it as 4 because that's the number you're going to put into the equation. Now the slope, I have to find another point on here. So I'm looking at my graph until I find a place where it crosses in a corner, not in the middle. That's almost in a corner, but not quite. So this will be tricky if you're taking the test. You have to look real careful. I'd see it right there. Now I have had it, got to find the slope between those two points. Well, the slope you find by finding the rise over run. Well, this thing is dropping. I know my slope is negative because it's dropping. And it's going down one, two, three, four, five boxes. And it's running one, two, three in this direction. So my slope is negative five thirds. The equation for this line then is y equals negative five thirds x plus four. And you are done. Good luck on your test. And if you're not taking my test, but you're just watching, I hope this helps on yours as well. Thanks for watching, and if there's something else that might be interesting to you, we'll pop it up right now. Otherwise, I'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye.